Good evening, and welcome to Immaculate Heart of Mary Church. The readings for today's Ash Wednesday can be found in your hymnal, number 1026. That's number 1026 in the red hymnal. Our opening hymn is number 474 in your red hymnal. Again, we keep this solemn fast, number 474. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And we're welcome to all of you. Beautiful to see so many gathered here this evening. Today, of course, we, be, we begin this beautiful season of Lent when we turn our hearts back to our Father. And we allow him to be who he is, and we can be who, who we are before him. We turn to him in penance and ask for forgiveness from our sins. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings, and libations, for the Lord your God. 
Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly. Gather the people, notify the congregation. Assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 53 in your blue gather. Be merciful, O Lord, number 5-3. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret and your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden, and your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. We're celebrating this beautiful day, and again, it's just beautiful to celebrate with all of you this evening. There's the, the, the one line in the gospel that's repeated three times, and your Father, who sees what is secret or sees what is hidden, will repay you. Your Father, who sees what is secret, will repay you. 
It's a beautiful line in a way I think it I think it kind of encapsulates all of Lent. Because in a wonderful way during Lent, what we're part of what we're invited into is to receive more deeply how good our Father is. In other words, to really become his children and to become his children all the way. That's what Jesus gave to us, the relationship with our Father. He gave us the Holy Spirit, which is the love of the Father. And every one of us here, every one of us is meant to know and to taste more and more deeply, day after day, the wonder of being sons and daughters of our Father who loves us. That's, that's part of what, so of course, the, part of the, the image that's given to us during the season of Lent is we're going into the desert with Jesus. And that, that, that sounds so stark to go there, to be without food, to give up everything. It sounds like we need to, you know, to have muscles and, and be, be really strong with Jesus and, be, and have to suffer so deeply. But the reason that Jesus, it's all of the Gospels are very clear, the reason that Jesus went into the desert was because the Holy Spirit had been given to him. The Holy Spirit, which is the love of the Father, came right after his baptism. The Father looking at Jesus saying, you are my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. We'll hear that gospel. We'll hear the gospel of his, him going out into the desert this coming Sunday. So Jesus goes into the desert to be with his Father, to be strengthened in, in what it means to be dependent and to receive even more deeply the gift of his Father. And that's what we are doing. We're being strengthened to become better children and sons and daughters, which means to enjoy how good our Father is, and so to live his life more deeply, which is why we're given the, this, this threefold, um, uh, threefold gifts, threefold uh, uh, encouragements during this season of Lent, of fasting, of praying and almsgiving. But it's really meant to be seen in that context of receiving more deeply the gift of our Father. It's not something that we're, we're doing, and Jesus is really clear about that. It's not something that we do, that we earn something. I read, uh, read a couple of articles on Lent today, and some of them really emphasized that we are strengthening our spiritual muscles uh, during this season of Lent. And there's a truth to that. But as long as we understand what our muscles are meant for, where our muscles are not meant to be strengthened so we can earn our salvation, or that we can be strong and better than others, or that we, you know, that we kind of earn what God you know, is, is going to give to us, you know, that we're somehow earning our salvation, it has nothing to do with that at all. Our spiritual muscles are the strength to learn to be dependent on our Father, to be, to be open in a way to be vulnerable enough to receive the sweet, wonderful, and gentle, tender love of our Father, who is so good, who is so good. Jesus in the Gospel says, and he will repay you. That's not, that's not like he's, 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 oh, good, good, you did a good job there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay you pay back. But he pays us by being who he is. So good, a loving father who cares for all of our needs. And we are repaid when we, when we receive that gift, when we become to, to be like him more and more. And so we're given this threefold, in, threefold invitation. And it's the, it's, Prayer, and prayer is, is not, you know, prayer, prayer is that great mysterious thing. But essentially, when we're talking about this kind of prayer, it's relationship. We are given our Father. When we go to pray, it's not like, oh, good, you, 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 you prayed today, which, which is, it is really good, <laughs> we pray. But when we go and pray, we're receiving our Father. 
the love of the Father. It's important for us to take time to receive that when we pray. That's why I, one of the things I often recommend, when before you pray, remember already, your Father is loving you, loving you, loving you all the way. So it's when we receive, when we go to prayer, it's in relationship with our Father and how good it is to have our Father who is loving us even now, whatever situation we are in, He is loving us. And of course, we, we fast. And so, you know, fasting is hard. It's, it is hard. But, but we, we don't fast to prove to God anything. He, he's not so interested in that. But we fast, and it's not just so we're, so we're strengthened again so that we're, we're, you know, we're, we're better or whatever. At the end of Lent, if we, if we, if we haven't given up the one thing and we're not so faithful to it, God is not going to be loving us less. He loves us. He even loves our, our weakness and our vulnerability. He loves us so deeply. But when we fast, we're letting go of all of those things that we put into our life, that tendency to try to take for ourselves, or I need this. It gets in the way and blocks us and, and really aids us in forgetting that we have our Father who is bestowing a million silent gifts on us all the time. When we clear away some of that, we start to see, it's not just that we're, we're entering into absence or doing with less. Our fasting actually opens us up to receiving more, to, to see the more that we have, what, the, what, our, what our Father is giving to us. And then, of course, we have this great gift of almsgiving, which, it, which all of the saints have said is the most important. Uh, they're, they're all very important, and, they, and they're all interconnected. But almsgiving is so important. Why? Because it's so related to who our Father is. Our Father who is generosity. Our Father who is goodness. When we, when we release, um, even, even from those things of our need, when we let it go, we become greater images of our Father. We really become sons and daughters manifested manifesting him, looking like him, revealing him more deeply. And so we're, we're asked to give, to give away this almsgiving. And it, it, it's that great gift that helps us to receive our Father the most. Because how can we really receive God? How does he get into us unless we actually become like him? And that's the, that's the invitation to give away in prayer, beautifully, we receive the love of God. In almsgiving, we, we make it manifest. We, we become him. We, we, in a beautiful way, we actually become like Jesus on the cross, pouring our life out. We become images of our Father. And so that's what we're doing during the season of Lent. We're becoming like Christ. We're entering out with him, receiving more deeply the goodness emphasize a million times over the goodness of our Father by prayer, by fasting, and by almsgiving. Let's stand together and we'll bless our ashes. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who desire not the death of sinners but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes which we intend to receive upon our heads, that we who acknowledge that we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust, 
may through a steadfast observance of Lent gain pardon for sins and newness of life after the likeness of your risen one who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Well, come forward just like we do for communion. Please join us in singing number 643 in your blue gather, Ashes, number 643.
Let's stand together as we offer our prayers to our generous Father. For the Church, that we may be strengthened in the practices of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving as we embark on this holy season of repentance, we pray. Lord. For leaders of nations, that they may turn away from war and violence and turn toward peace and justice, we pray. Lord. That our Lenten disciplines may become habits that we continue past these 40 days, transforming our lives to ones more holy, more fulfilling, and more truly Christian, we pray. For all those who are preparing for initiation into the church, especially Katie and Sandy, that they may realize the grace that God has already blessed them with to bring them to this point, we pray. That our love of our neighbor, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, for all of our lives, may be a sign of the love the Lord calls us to in this world, we pray. For those who are sick or homebound, for those who have died, especially Joey Carlson, nephew of Mark and Mary Ellen Gross, for Emmett Dennehy, for whom this holy math is being offered, we pray. Merciful Father, you, you temper justice with mercy, and promise sinners forgiveness. Help us to follow your example through this season of repentance, trusting that our practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving may make us truly forgiving people and imitators of you, finding joy in your response to our prayers, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are being prepared, please join us in singing number 282 in your blue gather, Hosea, number 282. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
as we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing our communion hymn, number 290, In Your Blue Gather, Deep Within, number 290.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. 
pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our closing hymn is number 465 in your red hymnal, The Cross of Jesus, number 465.